Hello everybody and uh, it's nice to see you again today. Good to have you coming to the Word of God and uh, I've got something from the Lord to bless you and your family today. I want to speak about living in the overflow. Living in the overflow. It's something that the Lord has given to me. I want you to get your Bible and turn to John's Gospel chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse 7 down to verse 13 and I want you to listen to the whole message this will really bless you you know this story it's the feeding of the 5,000 says in verse 7 Philip answered Jesus and said 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take up a little a little keep that in your mind Philip had the little mentality. Um, look at verse 8. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There's a lad here which has five loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Jesus said, Make the men to sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down were about 5,000. So Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. Likewise of the fishes, as much as they could eat. I love that. Then they were filled. And he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that nothing be lost. Now, we know this story off by heart. We we know this story because I've preached on this many times. I'm sure you know the story, the feeding of the 5,000. And we know this so many times we've read the story. Philip said to Jesus in verse 7, Even if we had 200 pennies worth of bread and fish, that wouldn't even give everybody as much as they could eat, that will give them, notice the word that he uses, a little, a little, a little. Now the Bible says that these people were hungry and all that Philip's mentality was, they can have a little, even if we had 200 pennies worth. I want to tell you something. I believe uh, that God has not called us to meet needs by a little. God wants us to meet people's needs with 12 basketfuls left over. You see, here's a, a, the small-minded mentality from Philip because the disciples thought at the very most, at the very, very most, even if we had 200 pennies worth, at the very most, all that, literally, all that they could have was a little each just a little that's not the god that i serve the bible says in verse 11 that they could eat as much as they wanted <laughs> it was an open buffet they could eat as much as they wanted and i love the verse 12 says they were filled philip thought they could get just a little but jesus always gives them as much as they wanted and 12 baskets left over we know Psalm 23 off by heart, don't we? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When we come to verse 5, it says, Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup overruns, or my cup overflows. You see, folks, I believe that God does not just put a drop into our cup. God does not just give us a, a cup that's full to the brim. We serve a God that is an overflow God. He's an overflow God. He, he always lets the cup overflow. He anoints my head with oil and the cup overflows. There's nothing small about the generosity of God. There's nothing little about the giving, the extravagant giving of our God. He doesn't just give everybody a little. When we come to God, he gives us what we want to eat. And there's always 12 baskets left over. You see, we want to serve a God 
that doesn't give a little. We, we, we serve a God that's not stingy. He doesn't begrudge giving you a blessing today. It's a God that wants to bless you in incredible ways. We serve a God that wants to bless you far more exceedingly abundantly above all that we've ever even asked or, or thought of. That's what the scriptures say. So when Jesus comes to Philip, Philip says, give them all a little. No, 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 that's not what Jesus did here in the feeding of the 5,000. He gave them, according to verse 11, as much as they could eat. And there's always something left over. When God blesses you, he doesn't just meet the need. He, he all, there's always an overflow. Folks, I want to be living in the overflow of God's blessing. I am blessed beyond measure. Every Christian is blessed beyond measure, beyond understanding, beyond comprehension, beyond what our mental capacity can take. God blesses us and I wish you knew how much you're blessed of God. Christians are so tight they almost squeak when they walk. <laughs> But God has not called us to be tight, to be stingy, to begrudge. We are to give to God because our God is a God of great generosity and he always blesses us in incredible ways. You see, God is not the God of the minimum blessing. That is not the God that I serve. He's the God of the maximum blessing. He has blessed us more than any other person has ever blessed us. You are blessed, Christian. You're so blessed. I serve a God of the maximum blessing. He said, I've come to give you life and life more abundant. It's not just abundant life, it's more abundant. When the prodigal comes back, he did not get a calf. He got a fatted calf. When God gives us mercy, it's not just mercy, it's tender mercy. When he gives us kindness, it's not just kindness, it's loving kindness. He's a God that super exceeds and super extravagantly gives and lavishes so many blessings upon us. I'm living in the overflow of the blessing of God today. Wow, we serve an incredible God. He does not just fill the cup up. My cup's overflowing today. God does not give me barely enough to get through. God does not give me just enough to, to meet my need. He always gives me more than what I even ask. That's the kind of God that I serve. Now, this is not a prosperity gospel. Because I don't believe in that. But I believe that God super and abundantly and exceedingly gives more than anything that I've even asked or thought of according to the Bible. Verse 11, they, they add as much as they want. They add as much as they want. I hate going out to a restaurant and you pay a lot of money and they give you a leaf. <laughs> I, I like to eat food. I've got a good appetite. I like to eat my food. I don't want to be looking for the food. I want to be looking at the food. But when you come to the table of Jesus, he gives and he gives and he gives again. They were full in verse 12. Verse 11, they ate as much as they want. You say to me, but Johnny, my cup is dry today. I don't feel as if my cup's overflowing. I'm completely dry. Listen. I want you to take your eyes off your circumstances today. Take your eyes off your trouble. Take your eyes off your problem. Take your eyes off the difficulty that you find yourself in today. And look to the source. Look to Jesus Christ today. The one who is literally filling our cup until it's overflowing. That's the God that loves you today. That's the God that we serve. We don't serve a minimal God, we serve the maximum God, a God that I'm standing here and whatever I give to God, he does give back, pressed down, shaken together, running over. I'm standing in this place of serving God and I'm standing with 12 baskets full. Praise God for the God 
that is a giving God. Don't tell me that serving God is the wrong thing to do. Don't tell me that serving God, I'm going to be at a, a deficit. Don't tell me that serving God, it, it, it's the, the, the little, he'll give you little back. No, no, no. The workman is worthy of the hire and any servant of God that serves the Lord, he will not only meet your need, he will super abundantly meet you in the overflow of the blessing of God. We're literally overflowing with grace. We're literally overflowing with kindness and forgiveness and mercy and love. We are living in the overflow of the blessing of God. Here's something I want you to think about. God gets a kick out of blessing you. He gets a kick out of it. Where's that in the Bible? Have you ever read one of the greatest chapters in the Bible about blessing is in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Here's what it says. It says in verse 2, All these blessings shall come upon you and will overtake you. Now, here's the illustration. It gives the illustration of walking down a street or running in a certain direction. And you know in Psalm 23 where it says, Goodness and mercy will follow me. And you see literally the goodness and the mercy following you. Wherever you go, the blessing of God is tracking you down. But in Deuteronomy 28 verse 2, it says the blessing not only tracks you, but it literally overtakes you. We are overtaken with the blessing of God. That's how blessed we are. We're literally, if it was a race, the blessing of God will always win. It will always overtake us. It will always outrun us. The blessing of God has sprinted faster than me. It's literally overtaken me. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overcome with the blessing of God. I am so blessed in Jesus Christ. It says in verse 2. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed in the fruit of your body. You'll be blessed in the tilling of the ground. You'll be blessed with your cattle and your kine and your sheep. You'll be blessed in your basket and in your store. You'll be blessed when you come in, when you go out. You'll be blessed. And all your enemies that rise up against you, they will be smitten before your face. Verse 7. They will come against you one way, but they will flee in seven different directions. Now, what does that mean? It means, Christian, that you are so blessed of God. When your enemy comes against you, they will come in one way. The, here, here's the illustration. Your enemy's coming towards you in one direction, but God will smite them and they will scatter in seven different directions. Hallelujah. Wow. We are so blessed of God. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on the cup. Look at your cup. Look how God has blessed you. You're so blessed. Be encouraged. Jesus Christ is my source. He is the reason that I have overflow in my life. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, God is rich in mercy. Say that out loud. God is rich in mercy. Did you say it out loud? Oh, the devil doesn't want you to say it out loud. God is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he has loved us. God delights in mercy. God loves to display mercy on people that need it. God loves to find someone that's messed up and smother them in mercy. God loves to find someone that blew it and made all these mistakes. And he literally, in the overflow, he splashes his mercy all over the person that has fallen. We read in the Bible that Boaz came to Ruth and he let her glean not only in the fields, but the Bible says he left handfuls on purpose purposely Boaz went out of his way to leave handfuls of blessing everywhere Ruth would go that's the God that I serve today he's a God 
that lavishes such blessing on me that no matter where I go, his blessing is overtaking me. No matter where I go, he's dropping handfuls on purpose for me. I'm so blessed of the Lord. God gives us that the cup overflows. He's rich in mercy. Do you know, I've been a pastor for many years and there's one question that I'm asked more than any other question. I've been asked this question so many times. And the question is this. Can God forgive me for the sin that I've committed in my life? For all the wrong? Can God forgive me for what I've done? I have been asked that question more than any other question as a pastor. And I always take him to that verse. God is rich in mercy. The blood of Jesus Christ has completely eradicated and forgiven me of every sin that I have ever committed, past, present and future. When God forgives me, it's literally an overflowing forgiveness. When I need mercy, it's an overflowing mercy and grace. Now that's not an, an excuse to sin. No, but I am amazed at so many people that think God is a God that hates me. God is a God that's out to get me. He's mad at me. God is a God that loves to see me fall on my face. That's not the God that I serve. I do not serve a God that loves to give a little mercy. I do not serve a God that loves to prolong the suffering. I do not serve a God that loves you to live in guilt. That is not the God that I serve. He's rich in mercy. Hallelujah. You see, in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, mercy was not given freely. It was mercy with prejudice. It was mercy that, that was restricted. But in the New Testament, when Christ died on the cross, he died and that mercy became extravagant. Mercy rewrote my life. Mercy has changed my life, folks. I hope you understand that. And so we preach a message today to everyone online, no matter how much you've messed up, no matter how much you've sinned, no matter how much you've failed and blew it. I want to tell you of a God that says, bring it all to me because I am rich in mercy. I'm rich in mercy. He delights to show you mercy. So I want to preach today, bring me the woman caught in adultery because God's going to give her mercy. Bring me Mary Magdalene with seven demons because God's going to give her mercy. Bring me the murderer, bring me the gossip, bring me the worst of all sinners and where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Now folks, that is not a greasy gospel. That's not cheap grace. That is God's grace. That's the picture of God's grace. It splashes all over me. It's overabundant. It's completely overwhelming me no matter where I go. His blessing overtakes me. Hallelujah. I'm so blessed today to be a child of God and in the family of God. Bring God your addiction. Bring God your depression. Bring God your fears. Bring God your anger. Bring God your unforgiveness and your, your, your bitterness. Bring God your pain. Bring God that abortion. Bring God that divorce. Bring God your broken heart. And bring it all to him. He says, I've got it. I'm rich in mercy. I can forgive it all. I can cleanse it all. I can heal it all. That's the God that we preach about today. He's rich in mercy. My cup's overflowing with the blessing of the Lord. Isn't God good? I think God is so good. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 14. Listen to this verse. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, do you see that term there, exceedingly abundant? I challenge you to look at that. It is the, the Greek word, hooper. H-U-P-A-R, hooper. And it literally means hyper. It's where we get our English word, hyper, hooper and hyper. 
In one translation, it literally reads like this. And the grace of our Lord was hyperactive. It's where we get that expression from, you know, a hyperactive. Were you ever a child that was hyperactive growing up? Do you know any children that are hyperactive? Don't give them sugar. <laughs> but have you ever seen a hyperactive child? That's just the way they are. A hyperactive child never stops. It's always on the go. God's grace is hyperactive. God's grace is exceedingly abundant. And that's what it means in the Greek. It's literally hyper. It follows you. It's always on the go. It's always working. It's always trying to get you back. It's always to, trying to get you back on your feet. It's always trying to, to get your face heavenward. The grace of God is hyperactive. It's always working on your behalf. If you know any hyperactive children, you pray for them, for the blessing of God, for them to be hyper productivity and hyperactive. God can use any child. We sometimes put labels on children that are hyperactive. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just pray the blessing of God over them. You go to Deuteronomy 28 and you pray, Father, that blessing over your children. They're going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field and blessed in their capital and in their storehouses. They're going to be blessed. Hallelujah. God's grace is hyper. Hallelujah. My cup's overflowing today and so I want my praise to be overflowing. I want my worship to the King to be overflowing. I want my love for Jesus Christ to sweep to the side every other thing and my love for Jesus Christ to be paramount. Don't tell me that I've got to be calm. I think too many Christians are boring. I want the passion and the zeal of the Lord. God's grace is hyperactive. Hallelujah. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. His grace cannot be diminished. His mercy cannot be diminished. We have more blessings than we do have burdens. But what do we do? We look at the burdens when really we should be looking at the blessing of the Lord. God's grace is hyperactive. God's not mean. God's not a monster. He's not like Philip with this minimalistic attitude. Just give them a little. No, our God is so giving and full of generosity. He's a God, a maximum God. I'm living under the spout where the glory comes out. I'm, I'm enjoying the blessing of God. He's wonderful. I love him. He fills my cup. It's overflowing today. Amazing. Now, we read in the book of Judges, Judges chapter 15, and we read a story about Samson. <coughs> Excuse me. The Bible says that Samson faced, and he faced a thousand Philistines. Can you imagine that? One man against a thousand Philistines, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he slew. A thousand people with the jawbone of an ass. Now the Bible says he was dying of thirst at the end of this battle and not a bit of wonder. He was exhausted. He was dying of thirst. And out of the very same jawbone, the Bible says that he used it and water came out of the jawbone. And Samson was able to drink from that according to Judges chapter 15 verses 18 and 19. He, he drunk the water out of the jawbone and the Bible says his spirit came again. Can I tell you something? When you serve Jesus Christ and when you put your hand to the plough and when you serve the Lord, he is a God that gives to the servants. You could be in the work of God and you're dying of thirst, you're struggling. It's, it's, in, it's in the weapon that you've got in your hand. God's going to provide for you. Your spirit will return again. Drink. The water's there. God is always super abundantly, exceedingly, completely and absolutely meeting every need that we could ever 
ask for. I think of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They had it all. They had everything they could have ever wanted. What did the devil do? Take your eyes of what you've got and put your eyes on something that you don't have. And that is the oldest trick in the book by the devil. If you, Christian, are so critical and cynical and bitter, it is because you've taken your eyes off the blessing that you've got and you're looking to the grass that's greener on the other side. You think you're going to have something better over here. You think you're going to have something better out there. And the devil will quite often get your eyes off the blessing that you've got and you put your eyes on some far off blessing that you haven't got. And that's when Adam and Eve lost it all. I feel from the Lord today that you've got to keep your eyes on the blessing that you've got. And I want to encourage you in the work of God. Please, please don't take your eyes of what you've got. Thank God for the blessing that you've got. Stop complaining. The cup's overflowing. Give praise for what the Lord's going to do in your life. Keep drinking. Keep drinking from the cup. Jesus Christ has overflowed our cup. Hallelujah. Do you know your friends might leave you, but the cup's going to stay. Your money might vanish, but the cup's going to stay. Your health might fade, but the cup is going to stay. My cup overruns. Listen to this verse. Psalm 68 verse 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. We're so blessed, aren't we? We're so, so blessed. The Bible says in Psalm 86 verse 5, For God, you are good, ready to forgive, plenteous in mercy. God is good. God is good. Think about that. God, he's not cruel. He's not bitter. He's not cold. He's not evil or harsh or hateful. God's not heartless. He's not inhumane. He's not merciless or spiteful or unkind or vicious or hard. He's good. God is good. God is good. And also, the Bible also says he's ready to forgive. He's ready to forgive you. This is the day that he's ready to forgive you. Here's how I want to close. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 22, um, verse 22. Is it, uh, is it 52 verse 22? Uh, the Bible says, God says, I have taken out of your hand the cup of trembling. And you will no longer drink it. Now. Some of you have been drinking out of a cup of trembling. You've picked it up and your hands are shaking. Your hands are trembling. Or maybe you've got a health condition right now. And your hands are shaking or whatever it may be. God says this. Listen to the words again. I have taken out of your hand the cup of trembling. Who's making you afraid? Who's causing you to be anxious? God says, I want to take that cup out of your hand. And he wants to give you a new cup, a cup that's overflowing with blessing. A cup of overflowing blessing. Now, here's how I'm going to close. A to Z is the alphabet. We are so blessed in God. Do you know that we have spiritual blessings in Christ from A to Z? We do. A, we're accepted in the beloved. B, we're born of God. C, we're crucified with Christ. D, we're delivered from the power of darkness. E, enriched. F, forgiven. G, grounded in his love. H, hid with Christ. I, instructed. J, justified. K, Kept by the power of God. L led. M made nigh through the blood. N nourished. O ordained. P 
perfected, Q quickened, R redeemed, S sealed, T transformed, U unreprovable in his sight, V victorious, W washed, X. <laughs> I know you're waiting for X. <laughs> Acts, Revelation chapter 3 says Jesus has eyes of a flame of fire. Acts, we are Acts red under his eyes. Why? Yearned for after the bridegroom and said zealous unto all good works. We are blessed. A to Z in Jesus Christ. Wow. My cup's overflowing today. Your cup is overflowing today. I want you to realize the God that you serve does not just give minimum enough to get through. He's the God that's going to meet your needs. I want you to trust him. If you've got a need, if you've got a debt, I want you to believe God. He will not just give you little enough to get through. Have faith to believe. Here it comes now, Lord. You anoint my head with oil, my cup. It overflows. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Uh, pray God blessing upon you, living in the overflow that the Lord will bless. Father, for the people that's listening online, meet their every need in the overflow. You're the overflow God. Thank you for your grace, Lord. It's hyperactive. Thank you, God, that your mercies, you're rich in mercy. I thank you, God, for every blessing, A to Z, in Jesus Christ. I thank you you've made us to sit in heavenly places. Thank you, Lord, that we are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Thank you, God, you've called us out of darkness and transported us in the light. I pray your blessing on those that are listening online. I ask that you will give them such blessing. Father, encourage them in their walk with God. Meet their every need. And Father, we look to you for what you're going to do. I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ and for your glory alone. Amen. Well, let me just say before we go that if you um, have a need today and you want prayer, um, we're here for you. We want to make ourselves available. We want to... To, to pray the blessing of God on you, why don't you make contact with the ministry? Why don't you come to us and, and, and look for help and look for, for anything that we can do? We're your servants for Christ's sake and we pray the blessing of the Lord upon you. And we're here, we love you. Make contact and spread the word out. God is rich in mercy. May the Lord bless you today. Have a nice week. Thank you.